Hello, my name's Tom and welcome back to my channel where I talk a little bit about theatre, a little bit about being a PhD student and a little bit about those two things squished together. Today, the fourth episode of What The Theory and we are looking at dramaturgy. <laughs> The term dramaturgy has had a relatively rapid rise to prominence in the English-speaking theatre, and, like many words which we pinch from other languages, has come to mean a range of different, if interconnected, things. Dramaturgy can be both noun and verb, both a thing, although certainly an abstract thing at that, as well as a practice or set of practices. And what these practices are can vary in different contexts. And in order to think about what dramaturgy means today, I think it's really useful to look through the development of the term. Dramaturgy, both as a concept and a word, originated in what is today Germany, with Gotthold Ephraim Lessing's Hamburg Dramaturgy, a book and kind of collection of essays in which he took aim at the construction of contemporaneous drama. Very much a child of the Enlightenment, Lessing was very serious about theatre and about improving its aesthetic quality. Therefore, within this book of essays, he takes aim at methods of acting, as well as the construction of plays and many other elements of theatre theatre at the time. It is a book which very much aims to take stock at the work that he was seeing at that point, and suggest where theatre might go in the future. In this vein, it's very much an ancestor of Aristotle's poetics, which maybe I'll do a video about at some point, in taking an almost clinical approach to how drama and plays work. Lessing's full-time role at the Hamburg National Theatre was to be something between a resident playwright and a theatre critic, as well as writing some of the work that appeared on the stage of the Hamburg National Theatre, he'd also prepare contextual information to appear before or after certain productions, for example in the form of an essay within the programme for a certain piece. And this concept of having both authorial influence over a piece of work, as well as maintaining a slightly distant critical outlook is something which runs through all kinds of dramaturgical practice since. It was Bertolt Brecht who went on to develop the role of the dramaturg even further. At the Berliner Ensemble, where he worked, the dramaturg would not only take a look at a piece of text and its construction, but also many of the other production elements, such as the lighting, the direction, the design, the costume. And in many ways, I think this is a very simple development, from just thinking about what dialogue and narrative might mean to an audience to thinking about how all the other elements of theatre craft contribute to this meaning as well. In a UK or American context, we might assume some of these roles to be undertaken by the director, but there's a clear distinction here in that the dramaturg's role was rarely one to think about practicalities or the specific blocking of a certain scene, but to think more broadly and contextually and thematically about a piece of work. And it's here that we might start to arrive at a notion or a definition of what dramaturgy as an abstract noun is. The dramaturgy of a narrative-driven piece of theatre, for example, might be very similar to what we call the plot. In such a process, the role of the dramaturg might be to think about how the set of events which take place on stage add up to an effective journey for the audience. And when the notion of dramaturgy first washed up on the shores of the UK and America, this was very much how the role was conceived, as almost interchangeable with that of a literary manager. To help a playwright construct a piece of theatre to provide feedback on certain drafts, and to think about how the text of a play might be. But this is a more simplistic version of what dramaturgy can be. With the advent of post-dramatic theatre itself arguably conceived on the European continent, a play no longer has to have a narrative. And this is where the term becomes particularly useful. Because although a piece of theatre doesn't necessarily have to have a narrative, it does still have a dramaturgy. There are still elements of spoken word, of text, of movement, of light, of sound, which add up to an overall meaning. In the contemporary rehearsal 
rehearsal room then, whether a play is being devised from scratch or realised from a playwright's vision. The role of the dramaturg is usually one to think about the construction of the work, as well as how all the different elements add up to create meaning for an audience. In short then, we might say that dramaturgy is both the meaning of a piece, the text of a piece, but also a certain notion of the affective journey that an audience will go on throughout watching a piece. Although the term originated very much with text-based, narrative-driven theatre, it's become an increasingly useful concept for pieces of work where this isn't necessarily the case. And in a time when notions of what theatre can and could be are ever developing, it's an extremely useful critical term to have up our sleeves. Thank you very much for watching this episode of What The Theory. I hope you're going away with slightly more of an idea of what dramaturgy uh, might be. Um, if you have any questions or further thoughts from watching this, then please do put them down below, as well as any suggestions as to where what the theory might go in the future is, if there's any concept you're already interested in. Um, and if you would like to see those videos, then also please do consider subscribing. Thank you very much once again for watching, um, and have a great week.